Well, hello everyone. Philosopher Stoner 666 here. Well, not exactly 666. Still thinking of a name. That's better. I'll probably just forget it. Probably not gonna bother. Oh god, my hair looks so gross. I haven't showered in three days. Holy fuck. But yes. Merry Christmas. Really. But on the inside, it's bah humbug. I hate everything. Everything sucks. <laughs> That's on the inside. That's like some demonic, demonic elf of doom. But on the outside, it's hey, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. All the contrived bullshit. But. But I would, oh my God, I look so fat. That is a New Year's resolution. I'm gonna hit the gym more, three times a week. I haven't been to the gym. Well, I've been to the gym on and off, but I haven't really done like a serious cardio or weight workout since July, August. I don't know, I'm really struggling with depression. I, I've gone on a new antidepressant, uh, Wellbutrin. And it is helping, although I forgot to take it today. I just forget. I'm just so caught up with crap. Now I, I feel like shit because I haven't taken it, but um, an improvement. So what was I saying? I was saying but. But I suppose with the whole Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Seasons Greetings, Joyous Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah shit. Um, theologically speaking, it's not that asking that much of people. Like to pretend to be a good person, a nice person, decent, kind, generous, to pretend to be happy for like one fucking day of the year or for like the holiday season, like from say December 24th until the new year and pretend all of this crap and sort of force yourself to do it. Not really asking that much. Of course, the message is that you should do it all year round. I, I wouldn't say, you know, bah humbug really it's not even worth the bother of bah humbugging. It's like, you know, it, it, it's more, my, my issue with it is just the repetition of it. I'm, I mean, I'm only 30 and I feel like I'm 80. It's like, it's, it's a lot, most of it's been there, done that, got the t-shirt, done this before. Yeah, ho, 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 Santa, fucking reindeers, snowman, uh, pretty lights, the fucking stupid tree with the shit on it. Uh, the insincere Christmas cards, all that, all that crap, the presents even, it's like, who cares? I did read a quote, though, that was pretty good, that as you grow older, your list of things on your Christmas list gets shorter, and then there's stuff that you wished but you can't have. Like, I wish certain relatives of mine were alive that aren't alive. I wish my family had gotten along better and we could all sit down and have, like, a meal together. But no, I got an uncle. My dad uh, lent him money. Um, years ago, he was a crack addict. He spent like eighty thousand dollars on uh, on crack, and stole from his parents. My grandparents were rather wealthy, and like I said, he blew eighty fucking grand on crack. All he is, all he does, he's still alive today. All he does is smoke dope and drink beer and does drugs and doesn't do anything. And my dad lent him some money, and my dad's all pissed off because he's not repaying the debt. It's been like two months. They sold their house or something. It was almost like my dad gave them like bridge financing kind of like to get them through until they sold their house. And anyway, so they've sold it and he's not going to get his money back. So he's all feeling shitty about that. Then I got another uncle that my dad had a tear in his eye. Um, you know, saying that my aunt, uh, aunt, excuse me, uh, was like molested by my uncle. Um, he even molested his own daughter. I found out. Uh, though he, he went to court about it, he was released due to inadmissible evidence and he was sentenced to many, many years of community service. But the guy's basically a pedophile and he's also a homosexual and not that that matters. I mean, consenting adults, but still the guy's a creepy, weird pervert. He's about as tall as me. I'm like six foot four, 193 centimeters. I'm a tall, I'm a big guy and he is fucking huge. He's like as tall as me, massive, massive gut. He's like five, fucking probably 280, 300 pounds. Guy's a disgusting piece of shit. And my dad, like I said, he had a tear in his eye when he was mentioning about my aunt and all this stuff is coming out of the closet. So 
this whole fairy tale of the happy family, everybody getting together and, you know, uh, singing Christmas carols around the fire or holding hands or whatever is a bunch of crap. Bunch of crap. And like, like, like I said, it's mostly, it's, it's, it's been there, done that for me. It's like, how many times I got to do this? It, it reminds me of a quote uh, from Schopenhauer. And I'm badly paraphrasing. I forget the exact quote, but he sort of he sort of points out that the amusements in life, like a like a theme park kind of, are only meant to be experienced, you know, one or two times. Then after you know one or two times, a couple times, whatever, um, they start losing their charm. It's like watching a play, uh, the same play, like two three times. It loses its charm after two three times. Like the first time. Sure, it, it, there's something going on, something important, but after that, it's just, it just, uh, the shit doesn't go anywhere. It's like, yeah, like I said, it's the same stuff over and over again. So yeah, um, it is though the most important day of the year. My, one of my last videos that I did, I talked about Jordan Maxwell. He's a conspiracy theory guy, the grandfather of modern day conspiracy theories. He introduced uh, David Icke. Alex Jones and all those weird tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist guys. He would predates them. And he does a two hour lecture. You can search it on YouTube where he talks for two hours about this concept of astrotheology. So you have the winter solstice is the shortest day of the year. And then you have parallels in the Bible that Jesus was dead for three days. That's exactly what happens with the sun. The sun is clinically dead for three days starting on today actually the 22nd and then you know 22nd 23rd 24th 25th um it's like the 22nd 23rd the sun is clinically dead in the sky it's the shortest day of the year there's no daylight then by the 25th the sun has risen in the sky the sun is resurrected then you know, months later, by the time Easter hits, that's the literal resurrection. Life returns to the planet. The days have gotten longer. Life returns. Everything goes back to normal. So uh, the, the Romans called it the festival of Saul Invictus, the sun god. So there is something empirical, something valid going on with Christmas, that it is a literal rebirth resurrection of the northern hemisphere the rebirth of the sun. So there is a God and it's that orb in the sky, the literal sun, the daylight sun, that's God. And it is reborn every year on December the 25th. So there will always be some sort of festival. It is, like I said, for the, especially for the Northern Hemisphere, it is the most important day of the year. And as I, as I mentioned before, like David Hume talks about, there is no epistemological guarantee that the sun will rise tomorrow. It's the same with this. There's no guarantee that the sun is going to come back. Now, the sun's been doing this for thousands of years, the rotation of planet Earth, the tilt on its axis or whatever. Yeah, but it does this every year on December the 25th. The sun raises in the sky. The sun is reborn. And it is, like I said, it is something empirical, ver verifiable. And in some respects, it is an act of faith. There is no guarantee that it will do the same thing. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, the sun doesn't return, we're basically, we're all fucked. We're all going to die. But even though we are all going to die anyway, that, that's not the point. But the point is like life keeps surviving. Um, and there's a, a duality theme in Christianity, right? There's the, especially for the Northern Hemisphere, right? Six months of the year is spent in literal kind of darkness where the days are short, less than 12 hours. And then half of the year spent where the days are longer, light. So there's this duality, the good, the evil. You can't have one without the other sort of thing. And... Yeah, so it's a, that, that, it's sort of why Christianity took over at, at least the Northern Hemisphere countries and why it's an important holiday. And it makes total sense to me. And then, like I said, Jordan Maxwell, he goes on about it for like two hours. Look at my greasy hair. <laughs> greasy. Yeah, he goes on about it for like two hours. He makes a very solid case for it. And yeah, so... I can't really humbug it. It is a, it is something to celebrate. It is something empirically verifiable. It is worth some kind of uh, celebration, and it, you know, 
it's it's like I said, it's not asking too much to uh, pretend to be a good person for a couple of days a year, to, to to pretend to fake it. And for me, it is all just pretend. Like I've given some, like I, I make homemade wine. Still, I've done videos about that in the past. And this is batch. I'm giving it to people and stuff. And nobody's given me a gift. I've given these gifts to people. I don't even know why I fucking bother. I really don't. Uh, people ain't worth it. I'm not. I'm not worth it. I guess. So. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I guess the last subject I wanted to talk about was the whole phenomenon of MGTOW and incel. It's been on my mind lately. The past few days. Ah, man, I gotta get a fucking haircut. Shit, look at this. Look at this. I look like some Nelly fucking retard. <laughs> I look like an emo. I could be New Wave. I could be like a band like New Order or the Human League or uh, fucking, uh, I don't know. Yeah, who is just some like New Wave punker or something. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not high right now. I wish I was. Anyways, yeah, MGTOW and incel. So I'm not an incel. I'm not an involuntary celibate. I won't die a loser. I won't die a virgin. Not that it really matters, of course, but men going their own way. Where where, where to start on this? Oh, my God, I'm so fat looking. <laughs> my double chin. Yeah, I definitely got to hit the gym. Uh... Um, modern reality, there's statistics, it varies the statistics and, you know, statistics are not always reliable evidence, but that the divorce rate is somewhere like 50, 60, 70%, something like that in the modern era. Now, if you're a guy, it's a problem. You get married to a woman, maybe you have a kid, you're going to, and it's statistically, it's mostly the women, uh, divorcing the men. You got to pay child support, alimony, all this stuff. I think our Disneyland expectations of relationships and even friendships are, we have too high an opinion of ourselves, right? Everything in life is a value equation. So you have a relationship with someone like say romantic or even just a friendship, it's a value equation. There's a give and there's a take. Now maintaining that value equation for years, decades, like 10, 20, 30, 40 years, that's a job. That's hard without there being some sort of a need or a dependency. So in the past, right, women were not allowed to work. They had their beta male husband. They stayed with their husband because, well, for one thing, like an institution, say like the Catholic Church or another religious institution, said, hey, you want to get a divorce? Well, too bad. You can't get a fucking divorce. But their husband was responsible for paying all the bills and they couldn't work. So they were forced to stay with the fucker. Nowadays, that's not the case. Women can get jobs. Sure, there may be a glass ceiling, kind of, like they, you know, but they can mostly take care of themselves. They don't really need a guy. So we see the rates of divorce going through the roof. And yeah, they're, they're, these Disneyland fairy tale things that people cling to, we have too high an opinion of ourselves. Are you really that super cool, special, interesting? kind of a person that you know someone's not going to get bored with you eventually after a while like you really think you're that super cool special and interesting that you're just so hot to try it that after a couple years you're, you're you know like so people are not they're going to leave you or whatever you think you're that fucking special you're probably not and it doesn't matter. What, what, what men have to accept is that eventually women are going to leave. It's like that quote out of Fight Club. Um, that everyone will either reject you or die, basically. So yeah, women are going to leave. It doesn't matter if you're a so-called alpha male or a beta male or a delta male or a gamma male. Wherever you are in the hierarchy, it doesn't matter. Women are going to leave. Like, like imagine this, right? Women, it, it's said often that women go for guys that are the alpha male, right? They're the most attractive male. They chase a fairy tale of the, the unicorn creature of the submissive alpha male. So a, an alpha male is very dominant, assertive, aggressive, uh, unyielding. You know, that might be interesting for a while. Like, I can change him. I can fix him. I can, you know, get him to do what I want. And then his unyielding nature, you know, the woman's just going to get frustrated, fed up, whatever, and leave him. 
then she'll go to a guy that's like a beta male or a lesser male and you know she'll have a good time for for a while the guy's gonna kiss her ass buy her a diamond ring buy her flowers all that shit and eventually you know that's gonna get boring too imagine for like years not just a couple years but years say five ten years 15 years 20 years 30 years of someone always being nice to you always buying you presents always you know giving you chocolates or whatever the fuck you know, that's going to get boring after a while too. And then you're going to go back to an alpha male. And then that's going to get frustrating and boring. And, uh, you know, and, and that's not going to work out. So it's this sort of dilemma as a guy. You just sort of have to accept that, yeah, women are going to leave. And and, and same with men too. Like men have a, a, a biological drive for some sort of need for sexual variety and some sort of sexual newness and it varies from guy to guy but you know god if there is a god played a cruel trick making men slightly more horny than women although women can be in the like like i said we've only had birth control for a while for like a couple of decades so women's sexuality has always been sort of repressed and for good reason they sort of had to be careful they had to be selective of who of who they had babies with because they're, they're survival. And, you know, like I said, I'm a MGTOW. I'm not an incel. I don't hate women. I don't think all women are bitches or cunts or whatever the fuck. Uh, it's just sort of an acceptance of, well, you have to be, my, you know, mindful that, you know, Disneyland really doesn't exist and structure your life accordingly. You know, have a mission, have goals, have hobbies and interests that you're into that don't depend on any particular person that motivate you to get out of bed in the morning. Like I'm getting more into my hobbies and interests and stuff because I haven't fared well in relationships and I'm finding a greater satisfaction in that than in, and then in real relationships. I find it all kind of pointless to tell you the truth. As I've said before on my other videos, I find life to be kind of pointless and futile, but it's not meaningless. Like I said before, there is a value equation going on. So, like I said, this stuff just been going through my head. I've started uh, dating again, though. Like, I've been on a couple of dates. Um, but... It, it's I'm more after now like I it used to be all about sex for me and now it's more like just companionship like very very low-key going very slow just to go you know go out to have something to eat with somebody some so, sort of social contact I don't really even want to have sex or I don't I don't want a woman ever telling me again oh I love you because I've had women tell me they love me and they've left me and it didn't you know like I said, I'm a MGTOW. I'm structuring my life in such a way that, you know, I can still have a woman, a friend or something. Uh, I don't really want to do the whole relationship thing. I don't, I don't want to do the whole husband thing. I don't, I don't want to do any of that crap. You know, and there might be, I, I, I'm not totally honest, there might be some sort of part of my biology that still wants sex, but I recognize it as just a stupid, bi silly biological urge. It's just, it's it's the equivalent of like pissing or shitting or whatever. It's in that category. It's something, we, we put all this shit on a pedestal, you know, it, it really isn't that fucking great or super special or that interesting. Really isn't. It's about duping people into making babies and then we pair bond for a while we make some babies and then we move on to someone else and do it again you know and we also don't think that historically you know lifetime marriage used to work because people lived maybe they lived into their 40s and they were dead you know 60 was like an old age when my mother died she was like 61 you know in medieval times that would have been she would have been an elder that would have been really fucking old that it, it could work in, in, in past eras, but now and people are living into their 80s, 90s, whatever. It just doesn't work. Nothing lasts forever. And you got to prepare yourself accordingly, psychologically. You Like I said, find hobbies and interests and things to do. If, give yourself a mission in life, like you want to cure cancer or something, or spread a message, or work for a cause, or whatever. And you can't allow someone to put that fire in your belly that fire in your belly has got to come from something else not a relationship not a friendship not a anything like that and i suppose yeah the message is you know 
I don't know. I've been I've been rambling. I don't know what the, what the message is. It's just yeah, I have other stuff in your life going on. I guess that's what I've learned. And like I said, it's Christmas time. I'm gonna pretend to be nice and pretend to be generous and and do it all. It is almost an act of rebellion. Like I've said, Merry Christmas to people, and I I, I got the feeling as if if I hadn't said it to that person, they wouldn't have said it to me. I'm encountering a lot these days, like people don't, they, they say hello, there's no how are you, there's no nothing, we're very distant from each other. It's almost an act of rebellion to be jolly. There's a lot of misery and there's a lot of pain and suffering and stuff and, you know, um, it ain't it ain't worth bah humbugging. It, it, you know, it, it is, like I said, it is almost, I might, like I said, on the inside I feel like going rah, bah humbug, but really, uh, like I said, to force yourself to do it for a couple of days, not a big deal. And, you know, just g give what you can give and don't expect much out of people. Have very low expectations. Have very low expectations out of relationships and friendships and that sort of thing. And find hobbies and things to amuse yourself with. I, yeah, I guess that's the message. Um, wow, holy shit, I've been rambling for like 20 minutes. I don't like I said Christmas and MGTOW and incel and all that stuff don't really those topics don't really mesh but I somehow made a video where I combined it all into one and uh, yeah this is more of my own personal reflection like I said I don't um, this is like a diary entry it's not really I'm not really making a video to impress people or or anything like that um, yeah, I guess that's enough for now. Philosopher Stone or not, 666 out.